Hey guys, what's up? This is Don and welcome to an After Effects tutorial. And uh, today we'll be looking at some visual effects. Um, this is a short film that me and my friend made. And uh, we're gonna be taking a look, as the title suggests, the Superman takeoff effect. And uh, here's this dude. He looks up and then you know it's about to go down and then boom he flies off. So we'll be taking a look at how to shoot the footage, how to do the takeoff effect, and then also the um, shockwave effect on the ground there. So uh, let's get started. Okay, so we're in a new project now. We have our original footage here. We're just gonna get this and drop it to the new comp icon and a few things you need to consider whilst you're shooting the footage and uh, just a few tips to uh, make your life easier in post is um, one you need to use a tripod that will make more sense as we go along and uh, also if you can avoid shadows please do I shot this on a day where it was just cloudy so we didn't have any shadows at all so if you can avoid shadows please do and again that may make more sense as we go along um, and uh, I guess the only other thing is what the actor should do um, basically you need your actor to jump up as if they're gonna take off and then run off the frame as soon as they finish that motion and then in post the first thing you need to do is to identify the frame at which your actor starts to come back down again or the frame at which the upward motion finishes basically so for me that's about here any frame after this is pretty useless because the motion starts to deteriorate and the actor starts to come back down again so uh, I'm gonna go to this frame right here and then when you find that frame you just want to advance one more frame and then split the clip so to split the clip you wanna press shift control D or shift command D if you're on Mac and then uh, keep scrubbing through your clip until you find the frame where your actor leaves the frame completely so for me that's this right here and uh, you want to do the same thing just uh, shift control D to uh, split the clip and then you want to remove this clip in between the two that you split so um, when you've done that you want to go back to the end of uh, this other clip move forward one frame so it goes black and then go to the top one press the left square bracket key to nudge this other layer back so we have our actor jumping up in the air and disappearing pretty much so we need to carry on this upward motion and uh, to do this we need to duplicate the bottom plane and we need to freeze frame so right click time and then freeze frame and if I solo this and just uh, extend it in the timeline you can see that this is just this one frame of the actor frozen in midair so with this uh, layer what you want to do is to roto out your actor and uh, you can do that with the pen tool and uh, if you click the roto bezier uh, tick box this will give you some nice curves as you start drawing so you will never have any sharp edges unless you really want to okay I'm gonna pause my video and uh, return when I have completed this trace okay I'm just uh, placing my last point there and when I finish that you can see that uh, all we have left is just uh, the cutout of the actor frozen in midair okay so to do the actual takeoff or fly away effect uh, let's first of all name our layers correctly so this is the start plane and the top one is the end plane or end clip or whatever you want to call it and then uh, this right here is going to be the cutout so we can call this uh, superman or in fact no I think Hancock would be more appropriate okay let's uh, move this uh, Hancock layer to the top and 
we need to make it only start at this point. So I'm just gonna hit the left square bracket key. And I'm gonna add a keyframe to the position. And then move forward a few frames. And then we basically need to move this off frame up here. So now what this is gonna look like is the actor is going to jump up and then carry on flying upward. If we just do a quick run preview of this, we can uh, see what's happening. And uh, you can see there's a little bit of a jump between these two frames, the two uh, start plane and the end plane. And that's because uh, when me and my buddy filmed this, we didn't have a tripod. Uh, we got to the shoot location and then realized that uh, the tripod was still in the house. So we had to um, uh, just hold the camera as steady as possible. And he did a pretty good job. I mean, this is so subtle, you probably wouldn't even notice it. Um, so that's the reason why you need to use a tripod to avoid the frame jump when uh, you split the frames, basically. Okay, we can uh, add some uh, motion blur to this layer and make sure the motion blur switch is ticked, uh, the master switch, and also the switch on the layer itself. And that's just going to make it uh, a bit more realistic. So that's the fly off effect. We now need to add the shockwave effect on the ground. And to do that, we need to create a new solid. Let's call this shockwave. And we're going to pre-comp that straight away. So right click, pre-compose. Let's call this shockwave pre and hit OK. And then inside here, we want to make this comp into a square. So let's go to the comp settings and use 960 by 960 as our dimensions and then hit OK. We can uh, click on the layer, go to solid settings and then make comp size. Next thing we want to do is to draw a circle from the center here. And if you hold shift and control, you will draw from the center outward in all directions like this. Um, we need to go back to frame zero here and we need to animate the mask expansion. So at frame zero, this needs to be in the minus values to the point where you can't see any of the original white solid and then set a keyframe and then move forward a few frames. I'm gonna go to frame 15 and set this back to zero again. So we have this uh, circle growing basically. We wanna duplicate the mask and set it to subtract and we have this uh, small ring, uh, but that's not uh, large enough to create the shockwave effect we want. So we need to offset the keyframes of the second layer. So now we have this and we need to right click go to effect stylize and we're gonna use roughen edges because this right now is too sharp the shockwave would create with this would not look very impressive at all so if we set the border to be 75 and the edge sharpness to be zero we have a softer edge to work with and it's got some random noise on the inside and the outside so it looks more organic and it's going to work well so back to the original plane we need to make our shockwave layer into a 3d layer so hit the 3d switch and if you can't see that just uh, toggle the switches down here and uh, hit r to bring up the rotation and we basically need to mess with the the X rotation first so something like this and then uh, move it down here you want the center of this to be the point at which your actor takes off from so right at the feet here seems to be right and uh, we can rotate this to try and match it to the environment and uh, we need this to start uh, when our actor takes off, basically, in line with the the position, the Hancock layer. So I would just hit the left bracket key to nudge that to that point in time. 
and uh, if I set my beginning and end to be a longer range you now see what's uh, going on so he jumps up and then as he starts to speed up the motion blur is really strong there that's when the shockwave appears basically um, you see that the shockwave kind of gets cut off uh, with these edges here and that, that, doesn't, that doesn't look very good so what I uh, did is uh, simply fade it up before it hits that edge so go to the opacity at this point and set it to 100 and just set a keyframe go back a few frames let's say roughly about here and then set another keyframe press K to jump to the next keyframe and then set that to zero oops that jumped to this keyframe down here we want the other one there we go so now it's gonna fade out before it hits that edge okay looking good let's uh, create a new adjustment layer go to effect distort displacement map and we need to set our displacement map as the shockwave pre and if we increase the max vertical displacement you can see that it's doing something but uh, it's treating this layer as if it's still 2d that's why we get this uh, 2d displacement uh, I mean this displacement on a 2d plane so what we actually need to do is to pre-compose that 3d layer again that shockwave layer so right click and pre-compose and call this shockwave pre 2 and then hit OK and if we go back to the original plane look at the uh, displacement map let's call this displacement uh, it automatically selected the shockwave pre 2 and now you can see that the shockwave is working OK we just have a, a little bit of a problem down here but we can fix that in a second um, you can see that I uh, kept this uh, actual layer on which is why we're seeing a little bit of white and I think that helps to enhance um, that look you can see the shockwave a bit better but uh, if you don't like it you can either switch it off or just uh, lower the opacity so if I press T I can maybe lower this to 35 and uh, that way it's more subtle but uh, it's just there uh, so you can see the shockwave uh, a little better now as for this black marks down here to fix those you need to basically go to your end plane here right click go to effect stylize and you want motion tile we want to click mirror edges because what's happening here is uh, the displacement effect is um, moving these pixels down here and because this frame is not large enough um, we start to see straight through to the other side and see the black backdrop so we need to mirror the edges so tick that and then output height you want to increase that until you can't see anything on there so there we go there's that problem fixed just like that okay so that's the shockwave effect and uh, the takeoff effect let's do a little color correction we're gonna start off by creating a new adjustment layer let's call this CC right click effect we're gonna start off with a curves adjustment so let's uh, uh, add some contrast and maybe lower this I want this to be kind of dark and uh, very sinister I'm gonna desaturate so go to effect color correction tint and maybe use 35 and uh, make the curves go after it um, um, the next thing I'm gonna do is to okay let's go back to our curves adjustment again I'm gonna go to the red here and let's uh, drop that a little bit so we start to get those blues in their shadows but we're gonna increase it in the highlights Let's go to green bump that up slightly in the shadows and decrease it in the highlights and same for the blue so this is uh, the final look 
uh, you can add some vignetting so right click new solid let's make this black and let's go to the ellipse tool and just double click it set it to subtract press F to bring up the feathering and just feather that out and then press T for the opacity and lower it to maybe 65 or so so it's a uh, more subtle I think 35 might be even better and uh, that's it so that is how you do the um, Superman takeoff effect I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial as I did making it and uh, yeah uh, let's just watch this one more time and uh, that's a wrap guys